Hi Floss Tube, it is Helen D. Today we're doing a kind of finish with me. I just finished stitching Blue Jays Summer. It's one of the seasonal couriers from Robin Pickens. And I'm going to finish this the same way that I finished this one, which is Robin's Spring. So these are finished on the charts, kind of floated on a piece of fabric and then framed, which is the same thing I did, except I added a piece of cording. I just think it adds a nice little kind of finished edge and kind of hides um, any lumpiness that might be in there <laughs> from gluing things down. Speaking of which, I forgot to grab my glue, so let's move that a little closer. So on these charts, on the back, she lists, Robin Pickens lists, um, model floated on thatched cornflower because Robin Pickens is actually a quilt fabric designer, so this is her fabric line. The thing about that that's great is when she's stitching and choosing her colors, she already has the backing, so she can really match those colors to the backing. So this one says it's on thatched cornflower, which I picked up a piece of, and then we have the stitching, and we're just going to put it together. Now this is a standard, off-the-shelf, 8x10 frame. So when I'm done, and it's time to switch seasons, I will just pop this out. and pop the new one in. Uh, I don't have glass because it is, you know, layered, so I don't have any glass. Um, all right, so let's get started. So the new piece is over here. This is my thatched cornflower, and this is my piece of stitching. I went through with my ruler and I measured out um, a half an inch on all four sides. This one I stitched on 28 count Lugana. I believe it is platinum. I didn't write it down, but I believe it's platinum. So I went through and measured so that I would have a half an inch on all four sides and I already cut a piece of mat board to that side. This is just regular mat board. I get it um, in the framing department um, in a giant sheet. And then for my backing, we're going to do the backing first. I had a piece left over of sticky board. It had a $1 sticker on it that I'd picked up someplace. So this is an 8x10 sticky board. Um, it's the perfect size. I had to trim just a little bit off the sides so that it would fit down in my frame. So this is what I'm going to use for my backing. If I did not have sticky board, I would cut another piece of mat board and then I would use either stitchery tape, which is the wide, and the brand is stitchery tape. It's this wide, I think it's an inch and a quarter, um, it's an inch and a half, double-sided acid-free tape, and I would run some long lines down my board to kind of make my own sticky board, or I would use um, like a spray adhesive that you could spray on one side and stick it to your background. Because my stitching is not touching this, um, I'm just gonna slap the sticky board right on there. <laughs> so I have my piece of backing fabric. I'm just gonna flip that so the right side is down and peel the sticky part off. I'm not using any batting or anything else on this because in the end I glue my top piece to this so I don't want this to be like saggy in any way I wanted a nice tight fit so I'm just gonna pop this right on there because this is a nice neutral there's no it's very forgiving right if I'm not lined up to something you're never going to know <laughs> so I'm just gonna smooth this on there I think I have like an inch and a half uh, this side might only be an inch, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to come in. I don't want to do that. Sometimes I cut some off my edge, but I'm not going to. I'm going to come in and glue this down kind of like a Christmas present. So I'm going to hot glue and fold up my edges. And then 
glue this down. Whoops, glue my finger down. And I'm gonna do the short sides first, and then I'll come in and do the long sides. Um, you could use other glue if you want for ease of use and speed of tutorial. The hot glue is just the best thing for me. Uh, some people use the double-sided tape for this as well. So I have that side. So now I'm going to come in here with the other side and just flip it up and glue and then we'll try and talk about corners as we go. You can, there's even the holes on this side, you can tell from where I cut it right off the, the edge. So for this backing piece, these corners are not going to be tight, but it doesn't matter because they're the ones that are going to be in the frame. No one's going to see them. So if they're not sharp, I don't care, <laughs> right? Like there's, you can tell kind of on these, they're not a sharp corner, but this is gonna be tucked in the frame and no one will see it. So the back, is now ready to go. All glued on there. I could put another line down here if that's bothering me. So this is good to go and I'm just gonna set it aside. Now for the stitching itself. The stitching, this is regular mat board. There's nothing sticky on it. I'm going to add a layer of batting. It just kind of gives it a nice look, makes it a little puffy. It's a little easier to um, center it if you have some batting on there. So I'm gonna come in with my stitchery tape and I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. I just need enough to hold the batting on. So I'm just gonna put a couple pieces down on there. Peel them off. And then I cut a piece of batting, just barely big enough, <laughs> that I'm going to lay that down on. So then I will cut the excess off. And what works best for me a lot of times is to use the um, rotary cutter. You can do it by hand, but this is just quicker. So we'll just cut these scraps off. And then while I have this out, I'm also going to take my stitched piece and just cut some of the extra. So I'm just gonna come up here. This is a two inch ruler. Um, I might come a full two inches. It doesn't really, as long as I leave myself enough room to turn it and I'm trying to cut off like the extra here that might be a little thicker. It doesn't even honestly have to be straight. Just clean it up. Okay. All right. This has been ironed. Um, it's ready to go. I was trying to eliminate as much editing <laughs> as I had to. So, there's a cat hair on there. I have my batting on my mat board and my stitched piece. I cut this so there's a half an inch extra on each side. So I have to kind of eyeball it to find that. 
and I hold it up to the light to kind of look. Another tool that we're going to use later too that's really helpful, um, 141 Design Co. has these like corner measurers, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, I'm sure that's not what she calls them. This one is a half inch. I know I left a half inch. So if I go up to one of the corners with a really sharp corner line, um, I can kind of line this up there to know that I need to pull it, pull it down a little or pull it over a little. And again, I'm going to hold this up to the light so I can see. Another trick that I typically do when I think I have it good, I flip it over to the back. You can go by the line of your fabric. Um, it's actually easier on Ada because it's easier to see the holes. Square it up as good as you can. Then I like to take score tape, S-C-O-R, which is another double-sided acid-free tape, but it's thinner and it's really easy to rip with your finger. And I'm gonna come in here and put a little piece on the top and bottom so that I can fold these over and see where it's at and get a better accurate measurement. So again, I'm trying to line that up with the bottom just so it holds it in place, but now I'm not like I need, I need it to come up. But my sides look pretty good. So if I take this and I need it to come up a little. Let's try that. I might have gone the wrong way. I totally went the wrong way. Then take your time and get it as good as you, as good as you can. Okay, now I can come in with that tool up here on the corner and see that I am just about, I'm a half inch from the top, I'm a half inch from the side. So that's probably about as good as I'm going to get it. Same on the other side. All right, so now I'm going to glue this down. Again, I'm using the hot glue. You can use whatever glue works best for you. Um, but for speed of use, I'm going to use this. And I'm doing it the same way. I'm going to come in here, fold the present. After I get my present corner's done, um, I will check it one more time because if I had to, I could pull it up and tweak things at this point. pretty good. You could lace it on here too if you don't want to glue, but I'm just going to glue. I'm a little off right there. Okay, so let's glue one of these on. See what we have. I don't want to pull this super tight because then sometimes it puckers. And because the batting's on there, I can then kind of like push this up with my finger if I need to move a section. That looks pretty good. This, this right here is the reason why sometimes I leave the borders off things because I want it to be straight. And it's harder to do when it's obvious. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in on the sides. Check that. 
that one. Last one. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so the corners. These corners are also not very tight. I do want these corners tight. So I'm gonna try with the glue first, and then if the glue doesn't work, sometimes you have to sew them up. Um, so I'm gonna come in here with my glue and put some kind of on each of these little flaps and see if I can squeeze them in a little tighter. Some fabrics are easier than others. This is a nice, soft fabric they're a little easier to manipulate than um, like a stiffer. So that one I think is going to be okay. There's already a bit of glue on that one. And the cording we're going to put on kind of helps cover these up too. But I think this is going to work. I will show you one that's sewn in case you want to go that route. Um, again, stop and start editing wise. I just wanted to go one shot. I think for me that is going to be fine on my edges. This one's a little bumpy, but so for sewing, if you have to or want to, this is a piece that I had sewn. I usually take a piece of thick, this like I like this Americana quilting thread. You can I know you can get it at Joann's. You might be able to get it other places too. It's really thick. It's like a button, like a button thread, like that's a little thicker. I tie a knot in one end. I come up through with my knot, you know, leaving my knot dangling here. I come up through and start at the top so that that way I don't have any loose threads sticking out. So I start at the top and just sew them together a little bit, tie it off, do the next one. And that gives you a really nice sharp edge. Um, but this one's going to be fine for me. So now we need to attach this to this. And for this, I'm gonna go back to these tools and see if we have one that's the right size. Um, I, think, I think it's gonna be the one inch, if it even is. So this is the one inch tool. So I'm laying it on there so that it's right in the corner. And then if I shove that right up in, that's going to be a little more than one inch over here, I think. Okay, so that would be about one inch. So now I'm going to take this and flip it to the other opposite edge and see if it's also one inch. It's pretty close. So I want to be like an eighth of an inch away from where this is. Let's see if that's the same on this side. Get my ruler. <laughs> an inch and an eighth. An inch and an eighth. About an inch and an eighth. So because of that, I am going to have to kind of wing it. Um, if this had been exactly the right size, I would slather my glue on here, lay this on the corner, and just snug it up too. Because I have to be a little off, I'll just have to do some measuring once I have it on there. So I'm going to lay this on there. <clears throat> Actually, what I could do 
is lay this on there and kind of measure above it. I'm going to eyeball it. So this one I'm going to leave on here, ready to go. Then I'm going to take my stitch piece, flip it over, and I'm going to slather glue all over here, <laughs> which I know some people don't like. Um, I am going to use the Aileen's Tacky Glue for this um, because it gives it a really good seal. It takes a long time to dry, which is why sometimes that's not what I use. Um, but I'm going to slather this on there, and then typically I would set it aside to dry under some books. Then once it was dry, I would come back in with my cording. Um, Tutorial-wise, I'm going to do the cording first. This is the other reason why I don't this glue. Whew, it's a workout. So I'm putting it all around the edge. And then I have a paintbrush to kind of smooth it out and try and keep my hands clean. Sometimes I take the cap off and I just put a big dollop on there. All right, let's start with that. My official glue paintbrush. <laughs> So I definitely want to make sure I get the edges good so that it stays a nice tight seal. Like once I've got some glue on here, I'll come back to this one that I'm kind of holding. Sometimes you can just use your finger for this. If I didn't care about having to get up <laughs> and wash my hands, I might just use my finger just spread it all around. I might need a little more. I have some over the years that I have done this with hot glue, but it it doesn't doesn't hold as well. They tend to pop off. So I learned my lesson. All right, let's see how that's going to be. Might need a little more over here. Corner good. All right. I brought a washcloth so I could wipe my fingers. So I'm going to take this, slide this in. Flip it over, and because, remember, we pushed this in so it's in an eighth of an inch, I'm going to lay this on there. I'm not going to press it down. I'm just going to lay it on there, wipe my fingers again, <laughs> and then measure. So we know we want it an inch and an eighth. That's the other nice thing about this glue, is it gives you some wiggle room if you need to move things around, whereas the hot glue does not. It's actually an inch and a quarter almost on the top and bottom, but it's even, so that's fine. So, now that I have it where I want it, I'll come in and just kind of press it down. Like I said, typically, I would now take some heavy books and set them on here and leave it for like a good solid hour. Maybe two, maybe half a day if I forget about it, just to really get that attached. But, for tutorial purposes, we're going to add the cording. 
So I went in and actually made the cording already. I used two of the DMCs off the chart. I used 562 and 563 to make my cording because I thought that would look nice. So what I did is I took one of my colors. I'm just going to use this cone for example. All six strands. I went around my piece for measuring. Then I pinched it and then I used <laughs> Ooh, that's gonna be sticky. Then I used this length I just measured to measure four times. So I went, you know, one, two, three, four. Um, I'm gonna cut this off because I ran it in the glue to get four times. And that was my finished length. Then I took that super long length and I did, normally I would do three long lengths of one color and three of the other. And when you twist them together, you get kind of, you can kind of tell, like one of these is the light and one of these is the dark. Um, I did not have enough of one of these colors, the darker green. So I had enough for two long lengths of the darker green instead of three. So I decided to do, on each side of my cording, I have two lengths of the light and one of the dark. And actually that gives a really nice effect. I've done that before. So when you twist them together, you get more of a variegated look. So I have my cording. I've kind of trimmed up the end. When you make cording, I used the Chronic Cord Maker, which I do have a tutorial, I'll link it below. You get like a finished end and a knotted end. So we're gonna take our finished end, and this is the end that will show when we're done. Right here. So I'm gonna take my finished end. Now, if I were adding some kind of bow or something up top, I would make my cording so it ended up there and then I could hide it with the bow, hide the join. Uh, I'm not doing that. So what I'm going to do is take the, the clean end, I call it, of my cording and I'm going to start on the bottom. Right in the middle, middle-ish, right in the middle and that's where I'm going to start my cording. And I use the hot glue and I'm kind of running a line of glue all the way around but when I start, I leave like a half an inch to an inch. And I start over a little bit. So that that way when we're coming to join them, it's a little easier if you give yourself a little flap. So I'm just gonna come along. You could use the aliens for this. Um, you could use pins if you wanted to stick it in, but I have the best luck just with the hot glue. And I'm kind of putting it more on the blue fabric here than the um, actual stitching. last corner and I'm gonna end like an inch before where I need to be so now I come in and I kept a little scrap of one of the colors it's just a little piece and I'm just gonna pull out one length um, if you've watched me do finishing with cording before you you've seen this part <laughs> So I kept one little strand. I'm gonna come in and tie a knot just about where they connect. And this tying the knot will keep it from unraveling. And then we're gonna hide the piece we cut off. So I'm gonna come in
and I just tied a knot kind of right where they connect. So now I can come in here. I'm just going to use a smaller pair of scissors. I'm going to cut these strands off that I just tied the knot with. and then cut my cording off like a quarter of an inch and as you can see this piece that we didn't tie is going to unravel but this piece that we did is not so now we can go in flip up this piece that we left with the good the clean end put some glue down here right to kind of where the knot was glue this down and then this knotted piece, this is a bodkin, B-O-D-K-I-N. It's a flathead bodkin. I use this thing all the time. It's meant for pulling elastic through things. I never use it for that. <laughs> use it as a poker. So I'm going to take this knot and poke it underneath my stitching. So I'm just taking all that, sliding it underneath so that it kind of hides it. Now when I glue this down, it's going to cover right right to that edge. So now I'm going to come in on this side we left. And just cover that up. And then the last thing I do is I take one pin. <laughs> These are stainless steel bridle and lace pins. I'll put the link below, but look around. You can get them at most box stores. I get mine at Joann's. Um, and just kind of put this down in that knot, that little bump, to really hold it in place so that it's not going to go anywhere. And it tucks right in. I mean, you can tell if you're looking that there's a little bump there, but from afar, you won't really know. So there's my piece, and then, like I said, once it's dry, I'm going to go in and put that book on. When the time comes, I can take my spring piece out and pop my summer piece in. I'd put the back on, and it would be good to go. So that's how I'm planning on doing this whole series. There's spring, summer, there's... Um, a crow on some pumpkins and then I think it's a cardinal on a pine cone. Um, they're all the same size um, by Robin Pickens and I'm going to finish them all the same. She has all of the fabric line information um, on the charts and I got all of this fabric. I got it at 123stitch but look around if you have a quilt shop they might be able to get it for you. That's just where I was able to find mine. So there it is. If you have any questions let me know. Um, I'm going to go put my books on here and let it dry, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.